Hello everyone, this is RapBattler13, and today I'm going to teach you a little bit about this game called Lord of the Rings Online. It's a free-to-play online game from Turbine, and it takes place in Lord of the Rings universe. Now the first thing that you'll notice when you start up Lord of the Rings Online is that you're brought to the new character creation screen. Now here you can choose uh, from a race, you can choose your gender, and you can choose a class. So in this video I'm going to go over a little bit about each race and each class. Now the first thing you want to think about is, what do you want to be? Do you want to be a man, dwarf, hobbit, or elf? Now each race comes with its own unique benefits, and uh, each one has its own unique weaknesses as well. So generally, if you know a little bit about Lord of the Rings and the Lord of the Rings universe and RPGs in general, you can kind of uh, guess what the differences might be. For example, uh, man is the most well-balanced of the races, uh, that's not to s say that he's without uh, strengths or weaknesses. Uh, because of his diminishing of mankind characteristic, he has less willpower. Uh, but because men are very easily influenced, he also has easily inspired, uh, which means that he has incoming healing bonus. Uh, men are also stronger than others. And because the fourth age is the age of man, they have the greatest fate of any race. Now, fate has to do with your in-combat regeneration, so it means that you'll regenerate very quickly when you're in combat. And differences like this are what really uh, or impact your character. For example, if you were going to create a, uh, a man guardian, because of his increased fate, he would regenerate a lot in combat. Uh, whereas a hobbit guardian, because of his increased vitality, would have greater hit points to start out with. Also because of his rapid recovery, once he's out of combat, he regenerates health a whole lot. He also has uh, Hobbit Courage, which increases his fear resistance. And so Hobbits are basically small in stature, but they make up for it with uh, vitality and agility bonuses, although they are weaker than other races. Elves, uh, on the other hand, are mighty. They're very agile and they're uh, resistant to uh, disease and poison and that sort of thing. Uh, but because of the Sorrow of the Firstborn, they have less health and less morale regeneration. Morale is your HP, uh, by the way, this is for future reference, and power is essentially what your mana is. Now, for a dwarf, uh, they're stocky and they're sturdy, as you can see over here. They have a whole lot of vitality, less agility, and every dwarf can use one-handed axes. And this is very important because certain, uh, certain classes can't use certain weapons. So the fact that you can use a one-handed axe is very helpful in case you know, you're left without a weapon, you can just pick up an axe. So now that you know a little bit about the races, let's go over the classes. Now, uh, let's just start at the top and go down. A burglar is a, a pretty advanced class. Um, as you can see here, it's a support role. Uh, burglars have a lot of uh, debuff skills. They're very valuable in fellowship play, which uh, means that it's good when you're with groups. Burglars have the ability to uh, initiate fellowship maneuvers on command. Uh, fellowship maneuvers where you break through your opponent's defenses and each uh, fellowship member can make a very powerful attack on your opponent. This is very useful when taking down uh, epic enemies. He also has a lot of little stuns, slows, snares, and that sort of thing. Very good for sneaking around and he can deal great damage when he attacks while sneaking. Captain is a, a mid-range character. Uh, the only race that can play him is man uh, and you'll notice on the side certain races will be grayed out or certain classes will be grayed out when you're selecting a certain race because uh, that race cannot enter that profession anyhow a captain is uh, essentially the leader of a fellowship if you have him in your fellowship he is very helpful he can summon a herald to help and the herald can offer all sorts of benefits uh, his banners of war can offer anything from might bonuses to your fellowship to uh, agility bonuses, health benefits, that sort of thing. A good support character, and also very good in melee. And because of his herald, uh, he makes a good solo character, actually. Champion is what I, rec what I would recommend if you've never played Lord of the Rings Online, or if you've never played an MMORPG before. Because the champion has the ability to deal great damage very quickly and very efficiently. Uh, if you're a champion, you should always dual wield, because that's what champions do. They use two weapons, deal out maximum damage. If you're not dual wielding as a champion, you're probably losing. 
they don't have a lot of recovery abilities or defensive abilities, but it doesn't really matter because you'll be taking down your enemies very quickly. You can just rush in and use all your skills with impunity. If, however, you're afraid of dying, go ahead and choose the Guardian, because the Guardian uh, is a master of defense. Uh, a few very good defensive moves. Um, there's one that increases his block parry uh, and evade chances by like 50%, which makes him very good uh, for reactive... It, makes, it opens up the opportunity for reactive moves and that sort of thing. A couple regenerative abilities, and also can wear the heaviest armor and wear the, uh, wield the mightiest shields. Not the greatest damage dealer, though he does have a few very, very strong attacks. Um, later on, he'll be able to initiate fellowship maneuvers, and basically he's a tank. If you've ever played an RPG before, a tank is basically the person who uh, soaks up all the damage. He taunts all the enemies into attacking him because he can withstand it all. He has the greatest health reserves and the greatest armor of all the classes. The Hunter is what we call the DPS Master. He can deal great damage at a distance. With his bow, uh, he has the greatest range and greatest bow attacks. Um, he also is capable of dual wielding in melee combat, so he's not completely uh, weak and worthless up close. He has a bunch of good stuns and snares and that sort of thing. Um, so even though he's pretty fragile, he's very good at taking down his enemies at range. Very good agility, very good critical strike. Loremaster is kind of a complex character, very hard to describe. He is kind of a mix of a bunch of characters because he has a lot of healing, he's got a lot of attacks, and he's got a lot of buffs and debuffs. He can also summon a pet. Uh, you'll start out with something simple like maybe a bear or a hawk, and as the game progresses and as you uh, increase in level, you can upgrade to uh, summoning greater and cooler things. You know, I can eventually summon an eagle or something very cool like that. Uh, so his pet can go and deal a bunch of damage, um, but at the same time, he can have a bunch of... It's it's really hard to describe a Loremaster, honestly. He's a pretty advanced character and kind of hard to use, uh, but he's definitely worth it. If you can master the Loremaster, you're, you're great. You're the best utility character in a Fellowship. A lot of crowd control abilities and that sort of thing. Now, a Minstrel uh, is really a soul healer that's really all he does he's, he's kind of difficult to use as a solo character because he doesn't have a lot of damage doing abilities but his healing is incredible uh, very highly sought after in fellowships because he has the ability to heal everybody uh, very quickly and very efficiently uh, i like to say that what the champ the damage that the champion can deal the guardian can tank and the minstrel can heal uh, those three go hand in hand. If you have a, a minstrel, a guardian, and a champion in a fellowship, you're, you're you're golden. That's essentially all you need. The guardian to tank everything, the champion to deal all the damage, and the minstrel to mend all the wounds. Next up we have the rune keeper, and because man cannot be a rune keeper, I'll switch over to dwarf. Now a rune keeper uh, is kind of a utility character. Um, he can't use weapons, so he only uses runes, so the only time he attacks is when he's using abilities. Um, he can be very good as a solo character because he does have a lot of damage doing abilities, and he can be very good in a fellowship because he can switch between battles. Uh, he has something called attunement, which means that if you're using attack, it'll go over towards one direction, and if you're using healing, it'll go over to the other direction. Now, when you're building into attack uh, attunement, you can't use a lot of uh, healing abilities. And if you use healing, you'll lose attack and start building towards healing. But when you get to higher attunement ratings, your healing abilities uh, become better and you unlock the higher tiered abilities. So really you want to focus on one thing in combat. If you're going against a really high powered enemy and you've got a minstrel to back you up, then go for damage and then you can unlock really, really high powered damage moves. On the other hand, if you're the only healer, then you can build towards healing uh, if you're going against a high-powered enemy and your guardian uh, needs a healer. It's a really good utility character because you can switch between um, attacking and healing uh, in between battles. Finally, we have the Warden. The Warden is sort of a mix between a guardian and a champion. Uh, he's basically a, a higher damage dealing guardian. Uh, can't, he doesn't have heavy shields like the guardian does, so he doesn't have as much armor, but Next to the Guardian, he is the, he's the most sturdy character, uh, sturdy class of all of them. He can wield javelins to attack at a distance, uh, and he has these things called gambits, which kind of hard to describe. 
Um, basically, if you use a combination of skills, you'll unlock higher skills. And now these gambits, you can only learn them by actually doing them. So it's good to experiment and go around and, and mess with certain enemies and, and see what you can come up with. Um, these gambits unlock more powerful combos and that sort of thing. So if you know how to use your gambits properly, you can deal a massive amount of damage really, really quickly. Um, good as an off tank, or if a guardian's not handy as the main tank. Um, in order, you'd want to use a guardian as your main tank. And if you don't have a guardian, then a warden. And if you don't have a warden, then a champion. Because those three can all wield heavy armor. Now, Runekeeper and Warden are premium classes, meaning that if you are playing uh, the free version, you won't be able to get them. You'll have to buy them with turbine points. However, if you're a VIP, uh, you can unlock those uh, really easily. So that's the basic gist of what you can do to create a class, uh, to create a character. You just choose your race, uh, and like I described earlier, each one has its own unique benefits and uh, penalties. And then you can choose your class. Now, your race is very, very important because it affects greatly what you can do in your class and what you do later on in the game because each race can unlock racial traits. Later on in the game, as you get into higher levels, you'll be able to unlock stuff. For example, your return home skill. Uh, man will return to Bree, uh, an elf will return to Rivendell, that sort of thing. Uh, also, men can unlock a, a sword bonus damage or that, that kind of thing. So it's really important to choose to select your race wisely. It also determines where you're going to start out. Uh, men will start out in the Bree area, hobbits will start off in the Shire, that kind of thing. Um, and a man guardian is completely different from a dwarf guardian and a hobbit guardian and an elf guardian and so on and so forth because of their racial abilities. You know, An elf guardian will be very good at dodging attacks and landing moves. A hobbit will um, be very good at uh, taking a lot of damage because of his, his uh, increased vitality. A dwarf will just be like a solid wall and a man will be able to regenerate very quickly so you know think about your race first and then think about what class you want to do so once you've got all that done then you just hit continue and then you enter your name you can enter whatever you want and then of course you choose all your cosmetic options and things uh, choose your origin and that's just fun and so yeah that that's basically it and then uh, once you create it then you'll be launched into a beginning instance, and it'll teach you all about what you need to know to play the game. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you very soon in the game. Uh, if you decide to start playing the game, uh, my name in the game is Tholrus. Uh, that's my main. He's a level 41 guardian. Uh, I play on the Nimrodal server. So uh, come on and uh, play the game, and send me a tell in the game. You add me as a friend, and uh, we can quest together. My name is Repo13, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in Middle-earth. Happy hunting. Peace.